All right, so this is uh, Math 146, Section 6.1, Video 2. In Video 1, we were analyzing how to come up with the equation and the different particular parts of a parabola or a quadratic. Um, but we did everything with regards to the vertex being at the origin. In general, a vertex of the parabola is at a point H, K, where H just represents the X value of the coordinate and K represents the Y value of the coordinate. For whatever reason, they picked H and K. It is very common um, notation when it comes to finding the vertex of various different parts of different functions or the basically the shifting of different things. The H and K is typically what is used. So, Given the fact that H and K are going to be um, the vertex, then you can use that information to be able to find the focus and the directrix and the equation. So let's go ahead and just take a look at an example of something, and then we'll see how all this plays in, because we're going to have to do um, basically what is called, and a lot of times you have to do basically what is called completing the square in order to get it into the proper form. So if we take a look at an example, So let's see, we're going to find the equation of the parabola where they give us the vertex is at the point negative 2, 3, and the focus is going to be the point 0, 3. <clears throat> so what we basically want to do here is we want to come up with a way to graph the equation. Um, based upon this information. So this is the easier one because they've given us most of the information that we need. <clears throat> Instead of the equation being as simple as um, y squared equals 4ax, well now we have to take into account that this has been shifted. So your y has been shifted h units, your, excuse me, k units. Your x has been shifted h units. So now the equation basically becomes y minus k, that whole thing squared, equals 4 times, and then the x has been shifted by h units, so it's x minus h. <coughs> so that's going to be our general form, <laughs> and we have enough information to be able to plug everything else in that we need to find this equation. So this is, again, this one's really simple because the vertex gives you H and K. So there's H, there's K. So H is negative 2. So on the right-hand side of this equation, X subtracting negative 2 is going to be minus minus 2 or plus 2. And then on the left-hand side of the equation, it's going to be y minus the k value, which is 3. So it'll be y minus 3 quantity squared. And the only other thing we have to deal with is the a value. But again, remember that the focus gives you that a value. And in this case, you just have to be a little bit careful to realize what you're looking at. The vertex is at the point negative 2, 3. The focus is at the point 0, 3. Notice that the y values don't change, and that's because the axis of symmetry is going to go right through that y value. So that y value is going to be um, positive 3 the whole time, which tells me that this one is going to be an opening left and right. Um, but the distance from the negative 2 to the 0 is 2 units. So that we know, in this case, A here is going to be 2. And you might ask yourself, well, how do I actually know that A is 2? Why is A not negative 2? Because it could go the other direction. This just comes to the fact that you have to understand, if you were just to kind of mentally sketch this in your head, the focus is at the point 0, 3, which is going to be up here. <clears throat> and the vertex is at the point negative 2, 3, which is going to be, let's put that one in blue, over here. So remember that the, the uh, parabola has to open up around the focus. 
So there's your vertex. It's going to open up kind of around the focus. That was a horrible sketch. But there's your axis of symmetry. It's supposed to be, again, my sketch was awful. Um, but you know it opens to the right. So in this case, A has to be a positive 2. So we're going to get, for our final equation here, y minus 3, that quantity squared, equals 4 times 2, which is 8, times x plus 2. And again, absolutely nothing wrong with that specific equation. You could use other things if we wanted to to sketch the graph a little better than the way I did, that's for sure. Um, you could use the uh, lattice rectum to figure out the other two points. Again, you could really technically pick any other two points that you wanted to as long as you know what they are and that they are on the graph. Okay, that's the easier one because they've given you, they gave you the vertex, so they gave you H and K. They gave you the focus, which really helps you to find the A value. Let's say instead we are given this equation. x squared plus 4x minus 4y equals 0. <coughs> Excuse me. And the idea here is that this is still, <coughs> excuse me again, this is still a parabola. And again, it's because I have one of my variables, x, which its highest power is a 2. Yes, I know I have another linear x term in there, but the highest x value, highest x power, excuse me, is a 2, which makes it the quadratic term. And then the y part is only a linear term. So we know this is going to be a parabola. In this case, this should look like a standard parabola, one that we're used to seeing, because it's the x part that is squared. In order to put this in the proper form, however, you can't just easily solve that for y in terms of just an x squared. You're going to have an x term left over. So what we have to do is we have to do a process which is called completing the square. And what we're going to do is we're basically going to separate the x's and the y's on both sides of the equation. So let's go ahead and add 4y to the right-hand side. <clears throat> because this is not quite in this form or something similar to it yet, obviously the x's and the y's are going to be backwards, um, we need to get it into that form. So what we have to do is complete the square here. And to complete the square, what you need to do is you need to ask yourself, in order to make this a perfect square, I need to add a constant to this so that I can factor it down into some kind of x minus h quantity squared. And the way you do that is you take the um, coefficient of the linear term, which in this case is 4, and you divide it by 2. So that's going to give us 2. And then you square it, which ironically is going to give us another 4. So what you're going to have here is you're going to have x squared plus 4x and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 4. But what I've just done is I've added 4 to the left-hand side of the equation. I can't just arbitrarily do that. Algebraically, it doesn't work. So in order to make this right, I need to multi excuse me, I need to add 4 to the right side of the equation as well. Now at least it's balanced. And now what we can do is we can factor the left side. That is a perfect square, which is why we call it completing the square, because that factors to x plus 2 times x plus 2, or x plus 2 squared. And then on the right-hand side, technically you can factor out a 4 from that, so we would have 4 times y plus 1. Okay, and that is important, because now it is basically in our correct form. So what we should be able to figure out is now we can figure out what the vertex is because the vertex is hk. But remember, it's x minus h. In order to get a plus 2 in there, h would have to be negative 2. And it's y minus k. So in order to get a positive 1 with the y, it's going to have to have been a negative 1 for k. So there's our vertex. Um, we know in this case that the 4a part 
has to equal that piece right there, which is 4. So in this case, A is 1. And since we know that A is 1, that tells me that the focus is going to be one unit away from the vertex. And the biggest thing we have to figure out is which way does this go. Again, so the fact that the X over here was the squared part oops, um, tells us that it opens up or down. And since A is positive, it's going to open up. So if we wanted to sketch this, we would put the vertex at negative 2, negative 1. So let's actually put some hash marks in here. And again, this is just a sketch. So we're going to go to negative 2, negative 2, negative 1. Should be right about there. That's your vertex. According to this, the A value is positive 1, which tells us that I need to go one unit up. So my focus is going to be right there. So I know the parabola is going to open up around that. I also know my directrix, which would be one unit down. So that would be your directrix. So the directrix is the equation y equals negative 2. The focus is going to be at the point negative 2, 0. The axis of symmetry would actually go straight down through x equals negative 2. So if you were ever asked to write the axis of symmetry, that's what that would look like. And then if I wanted to figure out um, other points, I could simply use uh, the lattice rectum again to do this. And the lattice rectum is going to be <clears throat> basically at the same, in this case, um, y value as the focus. So if you plug in y equals 0 into our equation here, and this is our equation for the parabola, um, you plug in y equals 0, you would get the x squared plus 2, oops, not, sorry, x plus 2 squared is going to equal 4. Taking the square root of that on both sides, you get that x plus 2 is the positive or negative 2. So your x values, by subtracting 2, are going to be, let's see, 2 minus 2 would be 0, and negative 2 minus 2 would be negative 4. <clears throat> so you would get two additional points at y equals 0, x equals 0. So at the origin, and then at y equals 0, x equals negative 4 over here. And now I can go ahead and sketch my parabola through those points. All right. Um, some practical applications of this. Um, probably one of the easiest ones to think about is a satellite dish and how those work. Um, Basically, the focus is a point on the middle someplace within the bowl of the satellite dish, and that kind of helps um, the way a searchlight works. There's rays of light that come out of the searchlight. A telescope works with having a focus, um, and then there's a, at, the, at the bottom of the telescope, there's a, um, a parabolic shape. Um, I'm pretty sure, and don't quote me on this one, but I'm pretty sure your contact lenses work the same way. Anybody that wears contacts, um, they are basically parabolic in shape. Um, so there's lots of practical applications to this. All right, that is plenty good enough for this section. The next section we will come back and talk about ellipses, and then the final of the conic sections will be hyperbolas.